I mean, come on. Welcome back to Everdeez Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Everdeez Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about The Greatest Game Ever Played. The Greatest Game Ever Played is a 2005 theatrical release. It is directed by Bill Paxton, cinematography by Shane Hurlbut, editing by Elliot Graham, music by Brian Tyler, and it's written by Mark Frost, based off the book by Mark Frost. I tried to find a very detailed plot summary. I couldn't really find one, but from the sound of it, it sounds like just a retelling of the true story of Harry Varden and Francis We Met an amateur and a professional golfer in the U.S. Open in 1913. The film stars Shia LaBeouf as Francis, Stephen Delane as Harry, Josh Flitter as Eddie, and Stephen Marcus as Ted. This was filmed in Montreal and Kahnawake, Quebec. Some inaccuracies because it is based off true events. Uh, in the movie it's shown that Francis is only one stroke ahead of Harry and that he, sing he meets Parr on the 18th hole in order to be, you know, ahead of keep that one stroke ahead of Harry and win, where in reality, <laughs> Francis was five and six strokes ahead of Harry and Ted respectively, which is insane. We'll talk about that later. It also says something about, it showed in the movie that the weather was fair until about the third round, when I guess that's probably not what reality was. It didn't specify what reality was. It also says the last hole in the movie is dog leg right, when in reality it is dog leg left. I don't know what that means. It has a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. It had pretty positive reviews, a lot saying that the golf game was absolutely gripping and had an interesting human story attached to it. And then it had a $25 million budget and made $15.4 million in the box office, which is terrible. I feel so bad. Wow, this is so well executed. I Bill Paxton, didn't know you could direct like that. Bravo is what I have to say to that, my gosh. Also, I'm so thrilled I got to come back from break and watch this, so. From the very first shot in this movie, it's a huge, like, probably some kind of helicopter or huge crane shot of the expanse of, you know, the British Isle, I don't know, the edge of a cliff into this cute little shack house. I literally was like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, cinematography, I can already tell, what the heck, and then just immediately the fluidity you're right there in the story the movement i mean there are static shots for sure but they're so well placed in between all these beautiful moving shots and the choices of shots are so well done the scene where um francis is asking his dad for 50 dollars to join to try and do the qualifier amateur round it is so close up and it's handheld to add that like nervous, like he's asking his dad and his dad is definitely gonna say no and be like, you know, not nice about it. And like, that was such a great choice. And then just some of the, oh my gosh, just some of the shots, especially in the montages, there are two montages in the film. When one is when Francis is like seriously training for the amateur qualifier for the US Open. And the other is during the rain day of the US Open both are so stunningly shot like the whole movie is stunning but the montage shots for like i'm like no reason these are so ridiculously beautiful and um the cinematography really really stood out in this movie especially i feel like not a lot of movies use this many extreme close-ups this often and this bravely and this brazenly and it really worked for this movie the extreme close-ups were really uh, extreme close-up is like, so this could be considered like a medium close-up, what I'm in right now. A close-up would be like, you know, like this. And then an extreme close-up would be like, it'd be cutting off part of my face basically, which is insane. But so many of them worked and were just so good. And then the only like cinematography thing, um, there's a scene where right at the beginning, Francis runs to go, like literally right at the beginning, Francis runs to go get hit. Well, not right at the beginning, because he's a baby right at the beginning, basically. But the scene where he's gonna caddy for someone, but the person wants him to bring clubs of his own and play with him, um, 
he runs to go get his clubs and when his back is to the camera, you can see like the pack and the wire of his lav. And I feel like Shia goes to like try and hide it or something because he grabs his pants but then the cut, the shot ends. And that's like my only like took me out of it moment and it was right at the beginning and it's not a big deal. And no one else probably would have ever noticed that. So, well not no one else, but the majority probably would have never noticed. So the cinematography is so amazing. I mentioned those two montages. They are so well edited. It's not like overdone. It's not some cheesy montage. It is just beautiful montages to show the passage of like, this is what's happening. Okay, moving on. And they are well edited as well as well shot, like I mentioned. And the pacing of this period is so good. It reminds me of the last game in Miracle. I talked about how even though I knew the US won the gold, it's the whole point they made the movie. I was still at the edge of my seat, <laughs> like so stressed, so invested in the game. And that's how I felt during this. I knew Francis won. I had done all this research. I knew he actually really won by five and six strokes ahead. But in this, he's only winning by the one stroke ahead. And I, I knew he won. I knew they weren't going to change it. I knew he was going to win. And here I am at the edge of my seat, like, oh my God, I am so stressed. I can't handle this. And I knew the outcome. And that's how you know the edit is so well done. When even though you know what's going to happen, you are stressed. And that's just, I think that's the highest praise an editor can get is something feels so tense, even though a person knows the outcome. That's how you know you did the best, the best you could. Cinematography, music, they're tied. I, I can't even begin. The opening main title overture is so stunning. And then the music during the second montage during the like rain, bad weather sequence. I literally, I bought the soundtrack. I finished watching this. I opened up iTunes and I bought the soundtrack. That's, that's what I'm talking. Like, that's how good <laughs> the soundtrack is. I was like the whole time I was like, this music is ridiculous. It's so good. Just from the beginning, from the opening titles to the end, the music is so excellent. And I bought it because it's just, it's just like a perfect, like right away I was like, ooh, it gives me West Wing vibes. But then I'm like, ooh, but it's kind of like Western-y, but ooh, this and ooh, this, and it's just perfect. Brian Tyler outdid himself for this soundtrack, even though Brian Tyler's done, you know, Constantine. I'm pretty sure he did 300. He's done like so many incredible scores. And I'm over here like, the greatest game ever played is really good. <laughs> like it's so gorgeous. This is very well written. I, if you haven't gathered, I really enjoyed this movie and I think it was really well written. There were no parts that I was like, okay, this is really unnecessary or okay, this is kind of stupid. Every part felt important to Wimak's story, Francis's story. Um, my biggest complaint is that there's like two women in it <laughs> and it's a lot of white people, but at the end of the day it was 1913 and it's about three dudes playing in the US Open, so whatever, I guess. Um, but all that being said, uh, the Mark Frost did an excellent job. I'm sure did an excellent job adapting his book based on the true event, but then also adapting it for film so it's tense and insane. Also did an incredible job. I cheered when we met, made it to round, like he got into third place. I cheered when he got into third place. Um, I also, like really started to hate the dad. That's how well written those scenes were. Um, and I loved, loved, loved the relationship between Eddie and Francis. Eddie was grounding, was Francis's anchor in the game. I like in this movie, it makes me feel very much that Francis would not have gotten as far as he did if he didn't have Eddie there to ground him and bring him back to life and be like, who cares about the people watching you? Like sink it. What are you doing? Like quit thinking about that. Keep your head down, keep your head down, keep your head down. Um, and I adored that relationship and I thought it was really good. And then the thing that's like really, you know, insane to me is Harry Varden is considered one like, well, is I think still considered the greatest British golfer of all time. Um, and Francis we met in his first like actual big time game beat Harry Varden by five strokes. That's insane. 
That's nuts. I don't know a lot about golf, but I know you're five or, and six strokes ahead. You're in good shape. Like that's crazy to me. And I'm so impressed by the real Francis we met about that. Like that's, you know, in the game, I was like, heck yes, he's keeping toe with these professionals. And you know, he's the amateur or whatever. He's some kid who's not a gentleman and like all that kind of, which is stupid by the way. Um, but that's like so crazy to me. And like, he's, he's keeping them on their toes and he's gonna win. Where like, if the movie had been, he was five and six runs ahead, I would've been like, demolish them. <laughs> So I love that. I think that's insane and so awesome that in real life he was actually just beating them into the ground. <laughs> so crazy. And then just, I think it's well written. I think the dialogue, it, when there is dialogue, it's necessary and good. And there's a lot that doesn't have dialogue and that's really great. You know how I feel about that, show not tell. And then some small things, the dude that needed to be punched in the mouth got punched in the mouth, which was great. Um, and the father storyline was also really good. And the mother storyline was also really good. And I just, it's good. It's really well written. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Shia LaBeouf is an incredible actor. And then the mom, the mom, um, he's just trying to make you proud moment almost got me to cry. It almost got me. That was really well done. It was such a simple, he's just trying to make you proud, but she demolished that. That took me right in. And then I love that the Sarah's brother is the kid, another kid from Holes. So I love that. that Shia and the other kid from Holes got to work together again. That's fun. I don't know anything about the history of golf. I've heard about the like gentlemen only, only ladies forbidden thing. Um, I didn't realize, I mean, golf, <laughs> golf is kind of, class-based still, but I didn't realize it was like actually class-based back then. Like only like rich gentlemen could play golf and it wasn't for like poor people, even though that's definitely still kind of how it is. <laughs> um, but that's insane. That's, that's weird. I don't understand that. That's bonkers. But, um, his dad made me so mad <laughs> And when he like showed up to watch him so he'd lose, basically, he made him so nervous he'd lose and have to give up golf. I was pissed. And then the whole like sequence where he did give it up, he, like, he kept his promise to his father and how like sad he was and how good Shia was at portraying like the solemn depression and not like, you know, a tantrum or whatever else, just like I made, the choice to make the deal with my father. I failed. I can't do golf anymore. And that makes me really sad, but I'm just going to live my life. Like, you know, just that deep, like unsatisfaction. Just, oh, it was so good. But it made me so mad because I hate when parents do that to their kids. Garbage. Anyway, the smoke, this is so random. <laughs> There's a scene early on when they're asking Harry, they're either, I, I think they've already asked Harry to become a member of the Gentleman's Club, but I think they're asking Harry to go to the US Open and win it again. And there's one of the amateur, one of the, one of the other dudes that is the dude that gets smacked in the face. Um, he does a smoke ring from his cigar and it, it goes all the way down and around a billiard ball. What would that even be called? It's not the cue ball. It's just one of the, like the eight ball or something, you know, one of the balls. Uh, and that shot is long and I'm convinced the editor left it in because that dude did a smoke circle that ended up going all the way down and landed around, like the circle landed around a ball. And I was like, that's insane. If I had been the cinematographer, the director, the editor, I would have been like, it's, this is in the final cut. I don't care how we have to make it work. It's in the final cut. So nuts. I'm convinced the editor left it in probably because he wanted, they wanted, he, Elliot wanted it to stay in. And also because like the director and cinematographer were probably like that dude outdid himself with that smoke ring. We gotta keep it in. Cause that was nuts. So stupid, but nuts. Um, I loved Eddie. Like I've mentioned, I love that he was the anchor for Francis. It was exactly what Francis needed. Um, 
every time his mom was like super stressed out during a game and she was like, okay, I have to go inside, I can't deal with this. And they'd cheer and she'd like drop everything to go run over and see how he was doing because she just couldn't handle it. I loved every second of that. I thought it was so good. I loved her like support for him. It was very, very sweet. Um, and I just loved it. And then his dad giving him the dollar. Let's all hear it for the dad giving the dollar. He So at the end of the movie, he's won the US Open and people are lifting him and people start throwing money at him because as an amateur, he can't, um, he won't get the like winning money. He'll get the trophy, but he's not gonna be able to have the winnings because he's an amateur and not a professional. Um, so people start like throwing money at him and he says, put it in the hat and pass the hat around for Eddie. He wants to give the money to Eddie's family because they need it. And he's like, you know, taking the money and giving it to Eddie and his dad, he goes to grab a dollar and it's a dollar from his dad. I sobbed. It wasn't even that big of a storyline. Like, yes, his dad didn't approve and wasn't very nice and was like kicking him out. He was like, when you're done with this, you need to find another place to live. Like, I'm done with you. Um, and like, it did have that storyline and that was prominent. But it wasn't as, like, the main story and focus was the game and Francis and Harry and both of them going through some stuff. And so it got me. Got me so good. The dad giving him the dollar. I just, oof. It was so, so good. I cried. That's a cry count for the books, my friends. Um, anyway, I feel like this movie was really poorly marketed. I have to go back and watch a trailer but from what I remember I thought I remember seeing a trailer and it was Eddie and Shia and Eddie was making some kind of joke and I thought it was supposed to be like some stupid funny like golf movie with Shia LaBeouf and I was like no thank you that's so not my speed especially in 2005 when I was like 11 or 12 <laughs> so um I want to know part of it <laughs> I was like no thank you I feel like it was really poorly marketed because this movie is really good like, so good. I'm also surprised it has 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is like, even if you forget, like, if you're not all about the story, technically speaking, this movie is amazing. Like, the cinematography is so good. The music is so good. The editing is so good. Like, the acting is ridiculous. Like, technically speaking, it is very well done. So then if you're not, if you think the story needs a little more depth somewhere, which, fine, I guess okay but it's still not bad like i mean you got mulan 2 and then you got this i give it more than a 63 percent and i will <laughs> that's everything i have um my final rating is nine golf balls out of ten our total movie count is cry count is <laughs> Parent that's all is still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie watching win, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find out what movie watching win. I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. I have a tier starting at just one dollar. You get lots of bonus stuff. Okay, you get videos a week early. You have access to Patreon requests. You get a coupon code for merch. You can have monthly podcasts, monthly postcards, access to bonus content, just all the fun things. Daily trivia. Come on. Okay. And then buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. I just bought a bunch of new merch and also i'm leaving vlogmas merch up all year so if you didn't buy vlogmas merch during december you can still buy vlogmas merch um which i know it's february now for me to be saying that <laughs> but whatever uh until next time comment like and subscribe but i'm not in charge of real life you are so you do and don't be the uh british gentleman club leader about it he was horrible <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so this was a very, very generous gift from my boss's family. Um, and it changes colors. And so I figured I can make the color match like a theme of the movie or something. So today I'm doing green because the movie's about golf. <laughs> and that felt appropriate. Um, and then we changed some other things. This 
is the most incredible gift in the world from Max. Um, and I've had this for a while. I just had it with me at my house <laughs> because I love it. But I figured it could have a place in the studio because Kipple's the best in the world. So, and then that is from my love, Carol Ann, who you all know or should know at least. Um, she got me that a couple of birthdays or a couple of Christmases ago or one or only one or two Christmas birthdays ago. And um, I love it. And I figured that needs a place to come be in the studio as well. Um, and then there's some, you know, the Lizzie McGuire pin I did end up putting over there, but I put it down here. And then the Toy Story little patches came with my four thing. And then all the Mickeys are still there. They're just found a window and staggered. Um, and then over here pretty much hasn't changed, but they're, the lithograph family is growing now with the tapestry isn't up here but yeah nothing over here has really changed it's all da -da -da. <laughs> so um yeah also for those who are maybe wondering um i realize it's february <laughs> but this is the first stuff i am filming after the new year everything that you've seen up until twitches was filmed in november of 2022 so um, this is actually my first day back. It's January 3rd, uh, so it feels good. Fresh start, pretty new setup, kinda. Like, just jazzed, so.